Good morning, true crime friends. Our regular case is still on break. They have the week off. So today is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday, then Monday, we're going to be right back into the Melly case. But in the meantime, oh, true crime is getting personal this week. I'm telling you all of my personal true crime stories. I told you about the anthrax poisoning. I told you about the FBI and all of that. What was my other one? Child don't even remember. Unclear. But um, today, I'm going to tell you about the murder that happened in my building. Oh, yes. It was like only murders in the building, only there was no mystery as to who did it. And it had a profound effect on my life. So look, this is what happened. Picture it, Queens, 1998. I'm minding my own business. I'm trying to get my life together. I was newly sober. I was like, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to write out my steps tonight. Step four, Um, dear diary. Anyway, so I'm at my house being good and wholesome. And I was like, um, what is happening? It seems like I lived on a very quiet black in Queens. You think Queens, you think like a bunch of houses, a bunch of people. And yes, there's a couple million people that live there. But I was living in a lovely section in a very nice she-she building. It was my first she-she building. I was like, ooh, we she-she now. I feel so safe and secure. This is quite delightful. And then I hear bam, 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 bam. And I was like, hmm. What's happening out there in the alleyway? The the, uh, the super is putting out that garbage. Man, he's banging those cans around. And then my phone rings. Bring, bring. My girlfriend calls me from the city, from Manhattan. And she was like, um, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, why? She was like, I was just at dinner. She was fancy. She had a cell phone. I didn't have a cell phone, child. That was back in the days when we all had landlines. She was like, I was just here at dinner with some of our girlfriends and all of a sudden I got like this vibe that you weren't okay it was really weird it just came over me and I was like you are out of your mind I'm, I'm doing my work right now I'm writing out my steps and she was just like uh, that's the 12 steps of AA in case you're unclear so um I was you're supposed to write them out so I was like writing them out and um she was like, um, yeah, I don't know. I just had this crazy feeling. And while I'm talking to her, we start hearing sirens in the background. Now, where I lived in Queens, you might hear an airplane go over, but you were definitely not hearing sirens in my neighborhood. It's sirens and sirens and sirens. I didn't even notice them because I was on the phone talking to Tirza. And so um, she was like, what are all those sirens? And I was like... I don't know what's happening. And so she's like, I'm going to hold on, check out in the hall. And I was like, if there's something going on out there, I am not going into the hallway. She was like, you have a peephole. So I was like, okay, fine. So I wait a few minutes and I tiptoe down my hallway, like my interior hallway in my apartment. And I peep out the peephole, like, you know, like you do when you live in Queens. And I was like, what is happening out there? Let me see. And um, I see some people, but I don't understand what's going on. My building was very clean, spotlessly clean. And I opened my door and there's like paper and junk in the hallway. And I was like, what is happening? So I said, uh, what's going on? And one of my neighbors said, somebody is dying. Child, I slammed my door right back. And I was like, dear, girl, I don't know what's happening. They say somebody's dying. And then I started getting call waiting. And I was like, wait, nobody ever calls my house. Because even when we had landline, you didn't get like a zillion phone calls. So I was like, I don't, what's, I don't, girl, let me call you back. I'm gonna find out. I hang up the phone. As soon as I hang it up, the phone rings again and I'm a nervous wreck. I'm like, ooh, child, what is happening? Hello? And it was like eyewitness news at some local news station. And they're like, we hear there's a shooting in your building. I was like, wait, what? And they were like, yeah. So they are giving me information that I do not have while trying to ask me questions. According to the public record, you are a neighbor of Mr. and Mrs. Whoever. And um, there was a shooting in their apartment. And I was like, what? So across the hall lived this very nice family, a husband, a wife, and uh, their little boy, Jeffrey. Jeffrey was so cute. Do you remember Arthur the Aardvark? This kid reminded me of Arthur the Aardvark. And at this time in my life, now keep in mind, I'm a cute young 27-year-old. So I was like, I was not thinking about kids. I was like, this is New York. You don't even think about kids until you're 37. So I got 10 years to have kids, or so I thought. So um, I was like, now there's a cute little boy who lives across the hall. And I just like, people were like, can you babysit? I was like, no, I do not want to look at your baby. What are you, crazy? But this little kid, he reminded me of Arthur. I don't even know how I knew Arthur the Aardvark back then. Because Lord knows I didn't know nobody with kids when I was 27. Um, but this kid just like, I felt like this intense connection to this child, right? Um, oh, trigger warning. There's a lot of murder in this story, including the death of a child. Govern yourselves accordingly. So, um, but I had this intense connection with this kid, which seemed very strange 
even to me. And I had seen him and his family just that morning. I saw all the people from across the hall. He had on his little like Catholic schoolboy uniform and he's with his mom. He's like 10, 11 years old. I'm like, okay, cool. Have a good day, Arthur. I didn't even know his name at the time. So um, I closed the door. My phone keeps ringing. The news people keep calling. And I was like, how do they have my number? Oh, I have a listed number because back then we had yellow, white pages, your name and your phone number. Everything was in the white page. So, um, I open the door again and there's a bunch of policemen and all kinds of like dirt and there's a bicycle in the hall. I was like, what is going on? And the policeman said, go back in your apartment. And I was like, okay. So I went back in my apartment because I am a good and dutiful citizen. I can follow a direction. So I go back in my apartment and um, a little while later, knock, knock, knock. Here comes the, oh wait, the next, cause you know, I kept peeking out the hall. Cause you know, I'm nosy. I've been nosy. I come from a long line of nosy women. So here I am, my eyeball to the hole and I'm trying to look and I'm seeing, and I see the man from across the hall and he's standing, um, leaning up against the wall. And I was like, what? I don't understand what I'm seeing. And so, um, I crack open my apartment door just a little bit like you do when you live in Queens. And, um, I hear on, you know, the cops were all standing in the hallway and they had their radios on. So you could hear like commands coming in from headquarters, wherever commands come from when you have a police radio and you hear DOA at the hospital, DOA at the hospital, as it echoes down the hallway. And the man across the hall starts wailing this guttural wail. And he was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. What I thought he said was they killed my son. And I was like, who killed his child? Oh my God. Somebody. So the phone rings and I was like, somebody got killed. Oh, oh my God. And then Terrence calls me back. She's like, do you know anything? And I was like, girl, Somebody killed um, the, per the somebody in across the hall from me. And she was like, what? So I was like, let me find out more information. So a few minutes later, the police officer knocks on my door and he's like, good evening. Could not have been more bored. This man, he was just like, why'd they put me on rounds? Now I got to go talk to all the nosy neighbors. So he was asking me these questions. Did any bullets come through your apartment tonight? And I was like, ooh, note to self, if you hear sh shooting, stay away from your apartment door. It never occurred to me the bullets could come through that door. So um, I was like, no. He's like, how many shots did you hear? I was like, three, five, 65. I don't know. It was a bunch of them, but I didn't know they were shots. I thought it was the garbage man, the, the, uh, the super downstairs banging the garbage cans. And I was like, can you tell me what happened? He was like, no, ma'am. It's still under investigation. I was like, dang. So the news people keep calling and the news people are filling me in on what happened. This is what had happened. Seven minutes in child. I'm just getting to it, but this is what happened. My neighbor was out of work. He was uh, an older Hispanic man married to a very young and beautiful woman. They had like a one or two bedroom apartment. It was a fairly small apartment. Um, but you know, it's Queen's child. Real estate's expensive. So um, they had this, this small apartment, but everybody in New York does, unless you're super, super crazy rich. And he was out of work. The wife was paying all the bills because this man was so much older. He was very like machismo and I have to take care of my family and all this whole thing. He had grown children and then he'd married this young woman and they had one child together, a little boy named Jeffrey, who was 11 years old. He was out of work. The wife was mad that he was out of work. He was mad at the wife for being mad at him. And so um, he came home angry that night. He had been drunk. I knew he was real obsessive about his parking spot. He would circle the block round and round and round until he got a spot right in front of the building so that he could see his van from his window. While he circled the block, he would drink because it would sometimes take a long time. So after many hours of circling the block, he comes upstairs drunk and asks his wife for dinner. The wife is like, dinner? I worked all day. You're not working right now, blah, blah, blah. They get into an argument. He goes in the bedroom, comes back and gets a gun and shoots her and kills her. But because it's queen, queens in a on a beautiful, beautiful block, he was like, oh, well, the neighbors will hold these gunshots and um, they will call the police. But nobody did because we never heard gunshots over there before. And so when he shot the wife, the wife's sister, who happened to be there, came into the room and was like, ba -ba 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 -ba, you shot my sister. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So he shoots and kills the sister-in-law, too. Jeffrey comes out of the room because now Jeffrey's here in the commotion and he turns and shoots Jeffrey. But he didn't think he had killed Jeffrey. It was clear the wife and the sister were dead on the kitchen floor. And so um, he was like, okay, well, somebody's going to call the cops. And he sits down and cracks open another beer. But the cops don't come. So he picks up the phone and calls 911 and tells them, hey, 
I just shot my family. So of course, all the police in the world descend on our building. They rush in, they scoop up Jeffrey, they take him to the hospital, and, but Jeffrey is dead by the time he reaches the hospital. Now, I found all of that out from the news people who were calling, trying to get information from me. And I am freaking all the way out. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And at the time I was mad at my mother cause we had had a fight and I was not speaking to her. And I was like, it's sometimes when a girl needs her mother. And you know when that is during a triple homicide? Cause this man is crazy. Is he going to stay here? Oh my God, what is going to happen? But my mother was on a flight. And so I couldn't reach her. And so um, then, of course, the news media gets set up because you know how the news do. The news sets up and then there's um, the district attorney came and he put a podium out in front of our building. All the lights are there. And so then it's on the evening news. And this dude who I knew, who was just a friend, not like a boyfriend, he had a crush on me, but I really wasn't feeling him like that. Hey, this story about to take a crazy turn, y'all, because that was not crazy enough. So um, the news sets up a podium in front of my building and they're like, tonight, blah, blah, blah. They tell the whole story. But then they say, we will have justice in this county. This will not stand. And they're talking about the death penalty and all of that. I was like, this dude must be a politician because New York don't be putting people to death like that. So um, the... Uh, pe people started ringing my phone like crazy after that. My friends, this one dude who I knew, Ralph, was like, oh, probably shouldn't have used this name or whatever. Um, Ralph calls me and he's just like, yo, is that your building on the news? And I was like, yes. He was just like, um, do you, are you okay? I was like, no, I need my mother. But she, me and her are not speaking to each other right now because she get on my nerves. But, um. Uh, Oh my God, he said, do you want me to come over? And I said, no, because the building is on lockdown. The police are still doing their investigation. He was like, okay, I'll come over tomorrow and we'll hang out and you can tell me what happened. I was like, oh, you just being nosy, but okay. So um, I go to bed that night. I barely sleep, barely at all. And then I go to work the next morning because I need routine to keep my life together. So I got up in the morning and I go to work and I do whatever. And I come home and the news people are still trying to talk to me. And I was like, everybody calm down. And then Ralph met me after work. And we were talking, we were walking back to my apartment. He's like, look, we're just going to chill. We're going to get some pizza, whatever. I walk up to the front door of my apartment and it looks like the dead lady, the wife is standing in the lobby of the building. And I was like, oh, I'm a wreck. And Ralph is like, what? And I was like, that's the lady that got killed last night. He's like, that cannot be the lady. I was like, I'm telling you, that's the lady that got killed. Maybe somebody else got killed. Maybe I have this story all wrong. Maybe the police have it all wrong. So I open my door and I walk in because I'm like, maybe she a ghost child. I do not know. So um, I walk in and the super is talking to her. Turns out the lady who got killed, it was her sister. She had a bunch of sisters, but it was her sister who looks exactly like her. Totally freaked me out. So we were like, uh, my condolences, whatever. And now I'm a, a mess. So me and Ralphie go upstairs and we chit chat. And we go out, we get some pizza. We come home. And we're just talking. And I was like, look, even then I went to bed early. I was like, it's getting late. I got to go to bed. You got to get out of here. So we start talking. And then he was like, just let me give you a hug. And a hug turned into more of a hug. And I was a wreck. And he needed to comfort me. Well, he wanted to comfort me. And so he was very comforting. He was so comforting that I got pregnant with my first child. So I was like, oh, no, you got to get out of here. Because, you know, now I'm sufficiently comforted. And I I'm going to need you to go. And um, so I was like, Okay, whatever. And he was like, I'm going to go to the funerals with you. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So Saturday comes. That was like on a Tuesday. I think they were murdered on Monday. Ralph came on Tuesday. And then, well, you know, he showed up on Tuesday. And um, he also came on Tuesday. But um, Saturday comes. He's ghost. Nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, all this freaky stuff is happening in the building. Lights keep flashing and going out. The light, there was a light between my apartment door and the people across the hall's apartment door in the hallway. That light went out. The super changed it. It went out again. The super changed it. It went out again. Over three days, the light went out three times. The fourth day, I came home and the light has crashed onto the floor in a million pieces. And I was like, ghosts, are you here? What in the world is going on? So after they refused to replace the light in front of our building, now I'm trying to put my key in the door in the darkness thinking, am I going to be murdered? Are there ghosts? What's going on? They carted the dude off the jail inside my apartment. Lights would flash all the time. And I was like, listen, I didn't believe in ghosts before, but I believe in them now. And please leave my apartment. Go into the light, not the light that's above my kitchen sink. Go into the light someplace else because I'm going to need y'all to um get out of my apartment. Maybe they just got lost on the way to their apartment. Child. I don't know. So, um, a couple weeks go by. I quit speaking. I was like, ugh, whatever. I hooked up with this dude because I was in grief. 
I'm not even worried about it. Two weeks go by and I'm super nauseous, even on an empty stomach. I'm super nauseous. And a friend of mine was like, could you be pregnant? Because the thing with the dude. And I was like, girl, please. It wasn't even that deep. Like, not to be too graphic, but the, it, the encounter that we had was not like uh fully intimate if you know what i mean the car didn't get pulled all the way into the garage the car was like circling the outside of the garage if you know what i mean so um, i was like there's no way i could be pregnant the car didn't even get in the garage we just you know the car was parked in the driveway so um she was like, girl, you should take a test. I was so convinced this test was going to be negative that I took it at work because I was like, I'm super nauseous. My stomach is upset. I'm going to get me a ginger cookie and a pregnancy test. So I got myself a ginger cookie and a pregnancy test. And I just went to the bathroom because I had to pee. It was lunchtime. And I peed. You couldn't pee on a stick back then. You had to pee in a little cup and take a little dropper. Child, pregnancy test used to be like a science kit. you like, take the drops and put the drops. And I'm reading the directions sitting there on the toilet. Like, it could take four minutes to show a negative test. I was like, oh, okay, I got four minutes. Close up the piece of paper and looked. Two lines. I was like, what? Two lines? How are there two lines on this test? Um, turns out it didn't take much to get me pregnant back then. I was very young and very, very super duper fertile. And um, now we have a 25-year-old son together. And he is a delight. And uh, he drives me crazy. But he's my baby. I should probably post a picture of him because he's one of my adult children now. Because that was, it was 1998. That was 1997. He was born in 1998. But um, I was like, yo, Ralphie, um, I know I'm mad at you about that whole funeral thing. But, dude, we got to talk. Okay, dude, I got to go to the gym. Because, you know... All this cuteness don't happen automatically. I got to work at it. Like and subscribe. And I will post cute pictures of my tiny baby who's a big grown man now. Y'all have a great day. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.